Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Creative Leadership Podcast. My name is Arne van Oostrom and this podcast is brought to you by Blue Sky Republic. If you want to receive our awesome newsletter, just let me know on whatever Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, you can find me. Each month the newsletter will focus on a specific theme and this month we are focusing on creativity and what creativity is. And um, today on the show, we have Sam Furness. And Sam is one of the most creative persons I've ever met. Now, I have to tell you, you know, sometimes I talk to people on the show that I've known for a long time. Sometimes they're really good friends of mine. Sometimes I know them a little bit, and sometimes I don't know them at all. Now, Sam, I didn't know Sam. This is the first time I actually talked to him. Um, But you might be able to tell that while we're talking, I am actually discovering that we are so like-minded. There's so many things. And he's a lot younger than I am. So I really recognize his journey, his quest. So I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, I hope you will enjoy the conversation too. So here we go. I would say that I'm on a a lifelong expanding quest to discover all the different possible edges of what it means to be a creative person. Um, I'm fascinated with the idea that the lives that each of us have led, uh, the things that we're passionate about, our upbringings, our education, uh, our friendship circles, our jobs, all of these individual sort of ingredients that we have in our lives shape the way that we each perceive the world on a day-to-day basis um so the way that i see the world is different to the way you see the the, you see the world even if we live in the same neighborhood or even in the same street um and i think from a creative standpoint it's really well and just from a human standpoint too it's really interesting uh and exciting and crucial to kind of step out of our own ways of seeing um and into other people's ways of seeing um as uncomfortable as that may be sometimes um but i actually think that kind of through that there is a huge amount of uh inspiration and joy and and creativity uh to be found so i i kind of conduct lots of different experiments to kind of step into other people's ways of seeing that's that's who i am right now <laughs> well that's that's a lot i am um, let's let's start with the uh, lifelong quest uh because uh, that that's intriguing um when did that quest start or when were you conscious of I mean, when was the first time you kind of felt like yeah uh, this is a quest or mm. do, do you do you know i absolutely do know it's the term quest has actually been a more recent kind of development but the first point that i knew that i kind of wanted to say let's do think yeah let's do things a little bit differently was the end of 2015 um heading into t- heading into 2016 that that question actually of like kind of who am i you know who are you has been something that i've been wrestling with for for a while um i feel like i get very attached to certain th- like certain uh ideas or sort of mediums or communities um and i'll sort of really get involved with them for a period of time and then i kind of move on to the next thing um it's, and I guess I sort of take some of the ideas and the feelings and stuff that from the thing that I've left behind with me to the next thing. But, um, you know, growing up, I was always in like acting was my thing. Um, from super, super young age, I just lo- like love performing, love being on stage. Um, and then that kind of morphed into music in, in my kind of mid teens. And then it kind of went back to theater a little bit. And then I started working behind the scenes in music management and um, it was, yeah, 2015 that I, I'd been out of university for like four years, maybe. Um, and four years, 2015. Yeah. And 
I'd got this amazing job um, managing music artists at a company here in London, working with some of the biggest bands in the UK. Um, and even at that point, uh, yeah, a couple of probably, yeah, biggest artists in the world. Um, some medium sized bands and then some, some baby bands. And um, it was amazing. I, I knew that I had kind of wanted to work in music. I, I kind of imagined growing up that maybe I would be the person on stage, but as with, uh, as, as it usually happens, you normally kind of end up behind the scenes somewhere. And I, it was great. I was getting to sort of tick off that list of things that you you hope you want to do in a sort of exciting, creative, professional life. But there was a point towards end of 2015 where something felt just the equilibrium wasn't wasn't right between the, the creative work I was doing for other people and the creative things that I was doing for myself. Um throughout my sort of upbringing as i said i just, it was theater music there was always a vehicle for my own creative expression whether or not i had something profound to say or anything was kind of irrelevant but there was always just a vehicle for the right. just the, the playfulness of of creativity mm -hmm. um and after university when that kind of framework falls falls away um the, you know the community a curriculum the spaces in which to be creative um and sometimes you know i studied like contemporary performance and stuff at uni the tools and spaces for for, for that at university or, or a school are generally just an empty room with some chairs in it like it's you know yes. <laughs> you're not dealing with kind of high-tech stuff but mm. there is something so amazing about turning up to a seminar room and going on, I, I know for the next three hours that actually this room is full of possibility. This this room is a space to imagine, and it can be so much more than a empty room with well, yeah. with a circle of chairs. But it's 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 actually that's really interesting anyway. That um, yeah, exactly what you're saying. A space is, is not just a space. It can be can be many things. It depends on mm -hmm. your kind of you know. What, do you create that safe space for people to? Mm do things and to, to to actually change that space into something else um mm -hmm. I, I think the physical spaces are really intriguing in that way um they they can be many things but we only see them for what they are so a seminar room is a seminar room so you have to but they don't have to be mm -hmm. um but it's so i i think that um I think that idea of kind of um, uh, leaving things behind so being you know involved in something very deeply um and then and then all of a sudden you're yeah, moving on to to something else that's re i do recognize that a lot um, in my my own kind of uh, life mm. <laughs> yeah, but um i think there's something there that um do, i mean do you see yourself because of that do you see yourself as a as a more like a generalist or someone who is a, a, a an expert in something or is it is it because that quest kind of mm. feels a little mm. bit like you know, you're. Will you ever stop mm -hmm. the quest? <laughs> this may, uh, may be my question. Will you ever say, "Yeah, this is the thing. And I'm going to be an expert in this thing. This is all I'm going to do." Or, or do you feel you're you're like an expert in many things? Or what? What? How do you feel? About um, I hope to be an expert in the quest. <laughs> exactly. Well, there you <laughs> that's, go. That's yeah. if if it, if yeah. that's yeah. honestly, I, I I've realized that creative exploration is an art form in itself, and and I'm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a way of kind of feeling like I'm sharpening, you know, my tools and I'm getting better at something, um, at a craft, but I'm also sort of, so you've kind of got that inwards kind of, you know, mm -hmm. two lines coming together, but mm -hmm. I also feel like I'm expanding at the same time. So to just, to sort of just to sure. quickly dip back to the question before, basically end of 2015, I decided I've got to do things differently. So and it all throughout 2016 um i in my spare time i decided i need to i'm going to explore a different type of creativity every month for a year um and it was really just a way to just have a bit of structure for creativity outside of my work and can you explain that a little bit more yeah. so to so what kind of what, what what kind of creativities if that's a word mm. did you actually explore at first it was just about trying to learn some new skills i knew i wanted to start doing creative stuff again that was for me not for other not for the artists that i was working with 
um but i didn't really feel the call of music and the and theater acting because i just there was a reason i hadn't been doing it for those last few years and it clearly wasn't calling me so i thought right got to try and find something new where do i begin um like yeah because i i just that the only ways that i really knew how to express myself with music and acting um so it started as a bit of an exercise to just be like maybe i'll just hop skip and jump between a few different things throughout the year and i'll find the new thing and then i'll be like great now i can spend the rest of my life being a photographer done <laughs> um so it was about learning new skills to begin with but so some of the some of the months were actual kind of art form based um photography was one of them uh, origami was my very first month um cool. animation um a drawing but then i got broader with some of the months too like food color storytelling um what some got really really specific like uh my grandfather has had a lifelong love and passion obsession really with aviation uh, and and flight and um a lot of my sort of memories of him growing up are him making model airplanes in his shed and he's an amazing craftsman and so i spent a month just exploring like aviation and the art of flying and uh that took me down loads of interesting paths um i did other months on it was the year that um brexit happened um so i did one month just about um the eu and i tried to experience something in london for every eu member state i think i got to about 21 states out of 26 27 which i was pretty happy with over the course of a month in your spare time that's wow. quite an undertaking let me tell you <laughs> yeah. um and really just what started as a year of thinking oh, i'm just going to learn some new skills suddenly turned into this like whoa actually every single month is radically changing the way not only i see my creativity but the way that i move through the world the way that i see london is changing massively from when i'm exploring origami or mm -hmm. photography or animation and so that's where this kind of quest mentality uh came from yeah, and, and that connects to what you started with saying that you, um, you know, you're really interested in stepping into sort of the the shoes of other mm. people and ex kind of really, you know, being sort of seeing the world through their eyes. Yes, know, exactly. You know, right. So basically, that's what you've done. You went like, yeah. now I'm going to be an expert in origami. How is that? <laughs> yeah. What's life like when you do that? <laughs> It's a, it's a little bit um, and I, it looks peaceful. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I yeah, it's, I think it's really inspirational. Uh, so I have lots of questions about this, but uh, in a, I, I do have to kind of um, I get this image of uh, almost the opposite of what you just described is almost like you know the, um, like a, a Japanese craftsperson that mm. spends mm. his or her life you know, all about this one little th thing that they can yeah. do, maybe bonsai trees or something, or, or some yes. craft, some woodwork or, or painting or drawing technique or something, and, and being completely, you know, being that, just being that, being mm. that skill, being the craft, being that one thing, mm. um, uh, which is almost the opposite of what you, you kind of describe, which sounds, uh, so in a way, being that craft person, I'm always jealous of this craft person. So I always, so I, I kind of, yeah, you know, well, yeah, there you go. So, I mean, I started out as a photographer and I, I, yeah. I, I painted, I did theater, I did stand up comedy, I did all that stuff. Mm. I, I'm dipping in all these worlds and I'm always restless in a way. But, mm. uh, but also, I'm always jealous of people like my wife. She's a designer, that's what she does. She's really good at that. She, she just is a craft person, really. And it was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> she actually she makes things right and then they're there um is it is that something so it's interesting is there like um do you feel that you have i don't think you 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 know you already answered the question you don't want to land anything anywhere you don't want to land anywhere you don't want to be you the quest is the place Mm. Right. How do you create? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you carve out that as a sort of a space, as a place? Because it sounds really restless, and maybe mm. for other people they might also say like, 
you know, what are you going to be? <laughs> What's your, <laughs> when you grow up, oh. you know, what are you going to be? Oh God. Because we're, no, I know. but we're programmed yeah. that way. Right. So it's in yeah. our, it's in our, in our, in our school system. It's in our, in our upbringing most of the time. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. Right. And now what you're saying is like, I, uh, something in between everything. Like, yeah. Is that a thing? How do you, how do you, it's, um, uh, it's it's something that i th i think about a hell of a lot um you know with explore yeah with exploring new stuff all the time because after that year in 2016 of doing something every month i kind of just decided oh maybe this is just like a, a way to live um um uh, yeah maybe this is just a way to live and it doesn't have to just be a project um so I just kind of kept doing it, not like religiously every month, but I'd kind of dip in and out to sort of when I was quote unquote questing um, as a way to just feel like when I just needed that top up of connection to the world, meeting new people, it just felt like a framework that I could just snap back into my life, do it for three, six months pause for another six or a year. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just a way to kind of keep, keep things exciting um but yeah no I, I part of me still thinks i'm like oh maybe maybe one of these quests i'm just gonna find the thing like there's still a little naive like yeah, yeah, yeah. part of me but i no i i, I love I, I don't know i think it all <sighs> yeah i think there's a this maybe sounds kind of pretentious but like you can live you can live artistically like you can make your life a piece of art you know and yeah. and i kind of feel like that's what i'm trying to perfect is just like rather than thinking that the craft is something that i have to have a room for and i have to have like specific tools for and yeah space and it's something that i must spend dedicated you know this next three hours i'm going to be doing this like what about all of the in between moments of our lives the cracks of a day like mm. you know the walking to the supermarket and you know going to work and stuff like that i'm like what if you can all turn that into a kind of creative artistic experience even if it's just for you like Actually, um, what you're saying is, I, I just realized that. So we talked about kind of Japanese craftspersons and people, mm. um, but there's also this Japanese kind of philosophy, philosophy. Uh, called ma, 100%. right? Yeah. And there's this like, um, you know, the, the 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 sort of the essence of the the pot is sort of the space, the, is yeah. the inside space and the space around. So it's like the the inverse of of the object itself. So actually, you're saying these are all kind of places these are all defined objects and spaces but actually the, the essence of that thing is is what's around it so the essence so we talked to you about room the essence of the room is not the walls mm -hmm. and the and the floor that's not the essence of the room mm -hmm. the essence is the, mm -hmm. the space in between mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and the space in between the walls and outside of the walls that defines the space yeah. not the walls Definitely. So in a way, if you're looking at it, at life that way, that's what you're describing. You're saying, I have all these defined, you know, photography, uh, you know, uh, origami. These are all kind of defined things that you can do. But but it is actually the essence of it is it's what's around, which is yeah. in a way the way we live our lives, which is yeah. creativity, which is being yeah. uh, empathic, which is... Uh, you know, which is actually about connections and going mm. through life. And uh, uh, I think that's, it's a really interesting way of looking at things. And I don't think it's an odd thing. It's just that we are not programmed to look at that. But we mm -hmm. said, I think everybody senses it. It, it. I think it's there, except that I think that's because it's the essence of everything mm -hmm. we do. But we are focused so much on the defined things. Everything needs a def definition. And if it doesn't have a definition, it doesn't exist because we don't have words for it. And if we don't have yeah. words for it, if we don't have a name for it, yeah. it's not there. And we can't talk about it, which is fascinating. So yeah. in a way, what you're doing, that's why I think you're struggling with describing it, which I also always do, is like, because there's just yeah. no language. Mm -hmm. there's no, it only sounds like 
you're just messing about. No, you're, no, just, no. you're wandering around. You're like, you know, you're not really want to do anything. You don't want to have mm. a job. You don't want to, it's like, yeah. it doesn't, it's not defined. But, and here's my, my only sort of my personal experience with this. I, to me, when I, in, I started um, really being involved in, in design thinking in the sort of 2004, Four or five, it didn't. It wasn't defined at that time. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. to me. I always called it the, that space in between. Mm -hmm. But after a while, it became defined, and now I I have been mm -hmm. looking at my, for a way out because I feel <laughs> really like I don't want to be. But I started this company called Design Thinkers, and I started. So I was really yeah. like, you know, my Twitter handle was Design Thinkers. <laughs> uh, I was like, you're in it. <laughs> I'm in it for many years. I, I'm already like I, I, I don't. I, I'm looking for that space in between again. I'm like, like exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Kind of like, where do I? I don't want to be. This is. A, it has a definition, and people are discussing it oh, yeah. and talking about it. And they've like in their profile and their. It's a thing. That's not. It loses its mm -hmm. interest. I'm losing. I lose interest, and it's. It's just mm. you know. So. So that kind of you know if you if you if you you know listen to my my kind of kind of thinking about this what is that something you does it resonate with you is that something you recognize? yeah 100 i mean the, the the main thing that comes up to me comes up for me there is you know you talk about if you can't define it then it doesn't exist and i think we as human beings rest with that on a day-to-day -day basis if we can't define ourselves then we don't exist you know if you want to take it to that kind of level um i think people I've, I've certainly felt it and I watch my I watch my friends and my peers go through it too that you people just want want to know what label they can give themselves so they can just be like okay that's what I am and this means that this is this gives me a path ahead like for so long like you know I've, I have a few a, quite a few friends now that kind of work in these kind of in-between spaces um which i still don't really know i have no idea what like the work that i do now with these quests like i have no idea what industry it is absolutely no idea and um honestly like then the amount of times that i've spoken with friends of how frustrating it is when you know you're fill, filling out a funding application or you're like it, on anything that has basically a drop down menu on it and i'm like for god's sake i literally don't fit <laughs> in any of these things like That's or so neither cool. does my company yeah. like yeah yeah yeah. It's, the drop down um, menus that, the that drop down you... menu and i'm like well what if you know what if we we are a drop like what if yeah what if i am a yeah. drop down menu like if i'm the drop down menu where do i fit the drop down menu yeah, exactly. <laughs> um so it's um uh, i can i completely get it i completely get it um and but it's over years of doing these quests and yeah i think i started using the word quest around 2017 2018 and now fast forward if a few years you know i'm 18 months in to but running these creative quests that other people come and join so and I've, i'm six months into it being six months six months yeah six months into it being my full-time job now i stopped managing music artists six months ago um i was kind of part-time between music management and this which was caused all sorts of other sort of identity crisis moments uh two having two sort of professions that very different from each other one was about being behind the curtain and supporting the artist the other is very much about me running my own creative thing is not usual for a manager in the music industry to also have their own oh. artistic um endeavors and be loud and proud about it normally it was like oh kind of don't let other people know about that because that might make them see me as less of a manager or oh, it's, really? it's a weird i yeah honestly the music industry is full of closet uh closet artists <laughs> well, well it's yeah because i mean i think that's why you kind of get into the music industry in a way like you just yeah. you know described like you know you know you actually wanted to be on stage but you know not every it's only a few people actually make it yeah and, and the rest is going to kind of be supportive yeah. <laughs> basically yeah uh i think most of the roadies actually wanted to be uh you know the guitar player uh or something like that as, as, yeah as far as I can yeah tell. it's full of yeah it's um you see 
Yeah, but why, why is that? Why do you think that's the? Because that sounds like a almost like a paradox. Because in a way, you want sort of the mm -hmm. manager and the people in the music industry to understand the yeah. creatives and you know, and you understand them by being them, being like yeah. them, or at least right. So, how does that I think so? Yeah, I, I, I've, I, it's an answer, a question I tried to answer for for a long time when I was thinking about doing I, I yeah I knew I wanted to leave this was years ago I ended up going part-time but I was originally thinking that I was going to actually just leave my job and just sort of try and do creative things I had no idea what I wanted to do other than these quests that I was doing but I had no idea I was like how does this become a thing that makes any money like it was just a bit of a mess um yeah this was this was quite a few years ago now like four four years ago or so but i ended up going part-time and doing some kind of creative consulting work but all the way up to that moment where i was going to have this kind of defining conversation with my boss and be like look i just don't know if i want to do this anymore i've got all this other stuff that i want to explore and i just don't know how i can do all this creative stuff and still be a manager like all of that confusion came from spending probably a solid year like looking around the music industry people that i knew in the uk people that i knew in the states um and other places and looking at like okay are there any people i can find that are managers or booking agents or publishers or working at record labels that also like part of their identity is that they are also uh they have their own artistic practice or they run a different creative company And you can find examples where an art has got to a point and either they've kind of, they've like, they were in a band once and now they've become a manager or they, or they've, they're still a really successful artist and they've launched a record label. I mean, you look at the likes of sure, like, sure, sure. you know, Jay-Z yeah. or whatever, like, yeah, you know, exactly. they've, they're, they're, they're business, business people too. Um, and but you just don't really find it that it as an example the other way around not not that i could find anyway so that in my brain just made me go like oh well maybe maybe you just can't do it <laughs> rather than just going well uh, i'm going to be the person that does yeah, does it yeah, yeah, exactly. um at first it was oh i guess you can't do it but then over time that the sort of feeling me was like no no actually be the person that does it like there must be other people out there that feel the same way as you like of course just just start just yeah. start trying it so so yeah i kind of worked in this um i would call myself a parallel pather because <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> i was pursuing parallel paths like i was i was like no actually i want to i want to be an artist manager and support the artists that i work with and you know i work with some in incredible acts and i didn't want to give that up but I also wanted to pursue this path of being a creative person myself. So for, for three years, that's, that's what I did, but yeah, I'm six months into just doing, doing creative quests as a, as a full-time thing now and guiding other people through, through these kind of months long uh, journeys through different ways of um, perceiving the world and, and being creative. And um, yeah, I want to know more about that, but, but before I, 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 um... I dive into that. I I kind of want to understand where this all, all comes from because is it something that you? I mean, is it your your parents? Uh, did they are they creatives? Are they uh, or uh, do you have any or other examples? I mean, where where as a kid that you started? I mean, did you know there's there is there a connection? And I know you're interested in it. But you just said like you know there's what shaped you. You know, what are the things that you do, experiences that you had or the way you were brought up? What are, are there any things that you can kind of um, kind of link to? You're saying, yeah, yeah, because I this happened or my parents were like this or mm. is, is that? Um, yeah, there's definitely a few things there. Um, my very lucky to be from an extremely creative family. Um, first of all, mm -hmm. everybody in my family does something different with their creativity i think that probably has a lot to do with it my mm -hmm. dad is a phenomenal uh guitar player um, um my mom is amazing with kind of des interior design and um craft like craft stuff but i'd say yeah, design kind of interior design is kind of where i see her mostly um my 
my granny on my dad's side who is is definitely my kind of number one creative hero in the world she is an incredible painter but just just intel just very talented craft person with with her hands she was also um a professional dancer when she was growing up um before she kind of started a family um and my grandfather is an uh, amazing with woodwork and models my uncle is an is a landscape kind of architect like it it's pretty broad like lots of different stuff so that i think growing up around that <laughs> kind of a lot a yeah and <laughs> yeah totally oh and my, my mom my my grandma on my my mom's side um she was just a bit just super cu- curious like i would say that even just her fascination with the world and kind of architecture and history and she just would like devour books and write all mad notes in them like after she died when my mom was going through her stuff like she was yeah amazing like looking through these old books and she would leave notes in there it's like she was expecting somebody to I was like she couldn't have been leaving these for her it's like she kind of just wanted to leave her print on these books so other people could maybe experience it one day I don't know it's so I think a cocktail of all of those things um, definitely kind of showed me that there are um, lots of different ways to be creative. But I think the main thing in this is that um, no, none of them have really, they, they all kind of, they're all doing these things semi quote unquote, quote unquote semi professionally. Like I, you know, it, it, lot yeah the money was coming from from other places so i guess you know it would be this and i hate using this term but i guess people would be like oh they're like amateurs (laughs) and it's like and it's a hobby hobby. and like oh honestly (laughs) like it drives me absolutely insane because it just completely takes away Mm. from the weight and that i think the significance of what they've done for themselves and you know and it's i and i i really actually have a i have a serious bone to pick with the word hobby uh it's probably my least favorite word in the in the english language um because because i think i don't think the word hobby really carries the weight of of the thing of of what hobby of what quote unquote hobbies can mean to people so you say oh yeah I, my hobby is is painting um but for me like hobby the word is associated with kind of i don't know it's quite it's quite an archaic hmm. word you think of it kind of enid blyton like you know hobby you know oh yes we're good you know we're doing you're not really stamp good collecting at it. It's a, it yeah it's like, just a little pastime that yeah, you do it's not serious it's no more like, it's just you know, a yeah you and, can me- I, I, i'm gonna do meditation or i'm just gonna like uh, you know, yeah it just flowers. doesn't carry a kind of like a, a, a weight to it for for some reason to me well, it just doesn't it so, just doesn't carry it don't you think it's like so the way i if you know the, now i hear and i i feel exactly the same so i have yeah what people would say many hobbies yeah. I don't consider them hobbies. I consider them uh, possible career choices. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, but, they're part. They're part of you, like yeah. in some way. Yeah. yeah. But after uh, you know, after many years, and I'm, I'm a bit older than you are, uh, I actually started realizing that after very much, a long, long time, I started realizing. Wait a minute! It's all those things that are actually part of me. Yeah. That's who I am. I, it's totally. Not, and I, this idea, I actually, I stopped playing in a, so I played in a band and uh, I, I quit because at one point the drummer said uh, that he was, he really liked uh, rehearsing with the band because it's such a great hobby. Uh, he considered his music a hobby, he said. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know how you, how do you, how do you exactly he said it, but he mm. said it in a way that he, you know, he said he really liked it. It was a pastime. It's nice because, you know, he was really busy at his job, and uh, so you know, being a drummer was like a nice hobby to have. And it's like. I'm going to quit this band. <laughs> I, like, I don't. We're on different pages. <laughs> yes, I'm your hobby. I'm your hobby. <laughs> like, you know, that's what, yeah, we're totally different yeah. pages. I was like, I want, to be, I want to be a rock star. Are you crazy? And I know I'm never going to be, 
But exactly. Yeah. So it's actually interesting thing because the intention that you bring to it. It's the intention. Yeah. And so, but we need to have these labels because it's like, mm. so you want to be a professional then? And it's like, that's not the point. Right. It's, the, yeah. uh, it's the importance of the activity. It does something to me. Yes, I, 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 have, a, I have this kind of drive that I want, to, I want to show. Yes, I want to show the world. I want to be good at this. And I, and I don't have the patience for it because now I'm playing this thing and then I'm playing piano and now all of a sudden I'm painting again and I'm like doing this mm. and thing. But mm -hmm. it's all part of something mm -hmm. else and hobby takes that away but yeah. it also is sort of i think in our language what it says is that you have a job that's what you make your money and mm -hmm. then you have your private life so you have your mm -hmm. you know your 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 private life and your work life and those are two separate things and yeah. i think that's a you know i'm not a big on the conspiracy theories oh well, i'm fascinated by them by the way that's another story but <laughs> that to me that is the big conspiracy theory i think mm. somewhere it's like we are telling ourselves that job and you know your 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 and your private life those are two separate things and your job can be shitty because it has been for many people most people throughout history the job is shitty it's terrible but you need to do it because you need to have a living and there's only few people who are ha lucky enough to have a job that they actually like but anyway most people are, are stuck in a, whatever a cubicle or in a factory they don't like it and then they go home, they leave their job behind, and then, you know, and then maybe, and then and at one point they will uh, retire, and then they can spend all their day doing their hobby or something, you know, and mm -hmm, then I mm -hmm. think it's, um, that is, that's sh bullshit, that's not true, yeah, it's no, like, you have no. life, it's life, it's all part of it, and your hobby yeah. is actually often the thing that you love the most, Definitely. It's actually the thing that you actually really feel great yeah. about. We sh so thing that makes you feel feel like you yeah. um and yeah. i did some further digging on on the word hobby i was like right i'm gonna get to the bottom of this and <laughs> i so i looked up the sort of etymology of like what what is ho like hobby because i didn't even really like the way that the word sounded i was really had beef with this word i was like this sounds silly it's a silly word <laughs> and um so i looked into it and actually the um the etymology really kind of was the thing that was like nailing the coffin, like, okay, cool. We need, we need to revolt against this word. Um, it, that basically the link is a hobby. It goes back to like hobby horse, you know, like the kind of the wooden oh, right. yeah. and the idea being that the, why we've taken hobby from hobby horse is and um, reduced it to hobby is that it's an, I it's a, an activity or an act that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> and i just thought i i don't think most people that are like you know pas passionate hobbyists yeah. would agree that this act thing that they do their painting their photography their writing or yeah. whatever it is i don't think they'd consider that an act that doesn't go anywhere in well, fact that's it's yeah. actually go it is it is always going somewhere um it's very patronizing, but it's so way. so patronizing and so limited to the like oh well it's not generating money or it's not like making you well known you, or you know there you go. that's yeah. actually so i heard you kind of struggle by saying you know all the creative you know the, all the crafts so your, your family is into mm. um you're like you know but they're not it's not really it's not professional it's not they don't yeah. make money from it because again it's labels it's it's this like if yeah. you don't make any money from it yeah it's not really serious mm -hmm. Like, that's also like, what? What do you mean? Yeah. There's more yeah. value. There are way more values than just money. Yes, yeah. we need to have food on our table. Yes, yeah. we, and, and the system we're part of needs us to have money. So for sure, of course. Mm. But I always feel that um, there is an, there's also indirect uh, value. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, I, I often do a, a silly kind of warm up game when I do like a session with people. And I, one of the things I often ask people is to, um, share uh, a secret that their colleagues don't know about them. And, and most of the time, uh, they will share things like, you know, I actually play the saxophone, uh, or I, uh, you know, I, I, I used to be a, a DJ and, uh, or something like there's a lot of creativity mm. that comes out. They never shared that I never talked about, mm -hmm. uh, but but it is a it's an activity that shapes you because every activity you do shapes you. It 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 shapes mm -hmm. your brain. It creates these connections in your brain. Uh, exactly. When, when, you know, so you learn 
something it might not be that when you play the piano that in your job all of a sudden you're going to you know be the play, piano player or there's not a direct link with you making money from your job when in your free time you you kind of play piano but it does create different neural pathways in your brain it does shape the way you think and the way you understand the world and the way you see the world because you are more than your job you're you're more than your title you and so actually by if you really want to understand people you want to understand all the things they do you know and we talk about the, the, the peeling the onion i know there's a i have a i have a problem with language so you're mm. exactly what, to your point this you know hobby the word hobby but mm -hmm. i have a i have a big problem with us um you know uh, basically you know always needing words and if you know to make something real to make it mm. exist and if it mm. doesn't have a word we can't talk about it we can't think mm -hmm. about it we can't discuss it and then all of a sudden we need it, it, it we need to have language around it and we need to define it and it's all true and because it makes us human and language is important but we don't see the significance of or the or actually the limitation of language uh, because it, it's not really the word so exactly mm -hmm. to your point hobby you know all of a sudden there's this thing it's a hobby but it's not it doesn't mean what you're mm -hmm. doing is not that it does. It's not defined mm -hmm. by the words. Nothing is mm -hmm. defined by words, and and so I think that is sort of a uh, um, a problem when you talk about the quest and you talk about this thing in between and you, you know, mm -hmm. I, I I don't know I don't know how to escape that and which, which was my problem with you know things like design thinking and service design at the time where all of a sudden there was a definition of it. And then people mm -hmm. started arguing about the definition of it, and then there was you know stuff like that, and it like loses its its power because it it's boxed in, it becomes a, uh, a, a an object, a thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it loses the and all of a sudden you're losing your the sight on sort of the the essence of it, which is the inverse. It's actually the space that is around it, which is the most. That's where the value is. So mm -hmm. I I don't know. I need so. I think that we forget about that. So we, we were asking for job titles and then we forget mm -hmm. about everything else that actually surrounds mm -hmm. that job mm -hmm. title, which mm -hmm. makes that person the person mm -hmm. and, and makes that person a great salesperson. But, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. he's not a salesperson. He's like, you're not the salesperson. You are, you know, this person that does all these other things mm -hmm. too, Thanks. which you don't totally. use and you don't know yeah. that because it doesn't, you know, yeah. I don't know. I'm just... You know, and and on. that's like this frustrates me so I'm like <laughs> no I, I can I completely get it um and yeah there's a couple of things that come there and one is that I think having had a family that didn't do their sort of passions professionally it showed me that was a thing that made me realize from just intuitively like oh well your job doesn't define who you are as a creative person like I didn't I didn't growing up I didn't think of my dad as like my dad that like my dad does kind of you know works worked in the city you know doing um kind of like commodities trading like but I saw my dad as a guitarist <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like or, his or colleagues, do, do his colleagues know or, or is yeah he, is he still yeah working? he's always he's he's still working yeah he's yeah. still working um so do, do his colleagues know he's he's an awesome guitar player does he yeah 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 that he does he's, he's very like yeah he's he's very uh, he's all he's always actually always been really great at like keeping keeping that going but i think with all of my family i've never like the first people that i think of them as is the things that they're that they're passionate about their their crafts and rather than the things that they yeah. uh, you know actually do, what do they tell do? you when you when they hear you talk about this do you talk to, to them about this and what do they oh uh, yeah go do yeah i mean like, God. you need to get a job so. <laughs> well i do well it's, it's become is you know this has become my this has become my job in in a completely you know mad mm -hmm. mad way doing these monthly explorations has gone from being something that i just did for me um for for five five six years it was something that i just yeah it was just a it was a thing that i did for me i didn't expect it to go anywhere i knew there was something in it because it just felt like I tapped into a, a way to experience life that was, yeah, filling the cracks of the day with with creativity and tapping into all these different ways of seeing. And, sure. you know, just on, on your point there about like 
diff, you know explore you know you, the, the the acts that you kind of the things that you're passionate about the the things that you do in your day-to-day shape the way that your your brain works and you know opens up different neural pathways and I kind of got interested with that too with these quests mm. that like actually by exploring the world through photography for a month or through color for a month or patterns or whatever I was beginning to actually just feel my brain changing like this is all feeding back into me expanding the way that I see the world which can make me a better creative person it can make me a better artist manager it can make me a better consultant when I'm working on you know consulting projects Um, photography teaches you to frame it teaches you the value of of looking through a lens, framing it, and creating yeah. value that wasn't there because you didn't use that kind of that frame. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it teaches you to see things differently, like drawing. If you if totally. you draw and you you see, if you start drawing uh, things, then all of a sudden you're looking at it in a totally different way. All of a sudden you see it for real because you have to mm. draw it. Or you know, I think that is such a um, you know, these are different th- ways of using your brain and your skills, and and it builds something that might not be kind of clearly defined. But I think all of these things have. So my, I played in a band for a very, very long time. I still do actually. I if I facilitate or if I do uh, work with a team, I. I I always think about my early days w- w- in, with being a teenager, playing with a band, trying to kind of get everything together and everybody playing the same music or writing music together and agreeing on this and the tensions that were there. Uh, so I learned about teamwork from, from mm. that. I, I did mm. stand-up comedy and being on stage, uh, to me, I, that taught me how to be, uh, first of all, a keynote speaker, but also a facilitator uh, mm. by, by being vulnerable uh, mm. Theater taught me how they have to improv. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. So, so mm. I, you know, that's just what I would say. This is I mean, formal learning. It's not the formal education, but the informal education that taught me so much more <laughs> than yeah. than the formal education. Mm. But it's like, why do I separate these things? And 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 because if you think about it, there's always and and even family. To your point, I mean, what you just said. You know, you have your family. They gave you all those examples and that inspiration, or the kind of things, possibilities, options. And in a way, what you, you if I understand correctly, with your quest, what you do, you also give people all these options. Not mm. just about professions, but options to see the world, options to, to kind of, and it's like traveling. If you if you haven't traveled, you know you you. Um, so there's a beautiful quote under in Amsterdam. There, uh, you walk under. There's a bridge near the train station, but there's this this, this quote which is part of a poem um, by this lady from the 1600s. But uh, it says, um, if I translate that into English, it says, um, um, "Returning is not the same as uh, staying." Um, so if you, so the idea was uh, that if you, if you go somewhere, so you space, suppose you have a, a twin brother, you know, and you're living in, in the same city and one brother goes and travels the world, comes back, the other stays in the city. You do, you do not live in the same city anymore mm. because you will see mm-hmm. things differently because you traveled, mm. you filled your kind of your brain with these new experiences, which shapes both memory, mm-hmm. but also imagination. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. your, your brain is this machine that builds, kind of creates, um, creates things that are, are possibilities that mm. use your imagination, but it's actually building on your memory. So mm. you create sort of new memories for people that they can mm-hmm. use as pieces of a puzzle to create, to imagine new possibilities. That's basically what you do, which I That's, think. That is. <laughs> You've summed it up very, very, very well. Yes, exactly that. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit? So how does that, you know, practically, you know, how do you do that? How does it quest? What, 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 How's it so work? I, I, I'm interested in, in, in being part of that. I want to be a participant or something. How do mm. I, I sign up? What happens? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, we're, we're 18 months in. It was last year was very much like pilot, pilot mode. We did a mm. four month pilot. Um, we had 30, 30 people. Um, each month well 30 in january 30 in february and then 60 in in march um each month has a different theme um when you sign up generally you don't know what the theme is going to be until you've signed up so it's kind of 
getting people to step into the unknown more with the sort more with a sense of curiosity than than fear um and just going do you know what i'm going to go on this creative journey we're going to explore something for a month and whatever the theme is i'm going to get something from it that's the kind of spirit we're trying to encourage people to have on on signing up uh, rather than being like oh but what if i don't like the theme it's like trust just trust us like you'll find you'll find something um so yeah people people sign up um there's in the pilot it was done i pay what you kind of pay what you feel basis at the at the end of the month but there is like a monthly um kind of fee now um and there's four workshops over the month um each week we explore the theme from a different angle it's all run online at the moment so people from from all over the world sign up i think we've had people from 20 different countries sign up now over the last year and a half um and basically over the course of the month through workshops and a dedicated online city we have an online kind of hub where we post content and stuff as well um we all kind of bring this theme into our lives so we've done seven quests since last january um the themes were ugh, poetry movement color home collage movement rewilding and sound uh we've just we've just finished sound um and the idea is is that you kind of invite this theme into your life over the course of the month um the first session of the month is is really about everybody meeting each other so it's just that, that is always one of the absolute highlights for me is just we have 30 people in in a session and just hearing the different reasons that people have signed up to something like this and where they're coming from who they are it's just it's a really magic magic moment every time um and then we start focusing on like okay what do we each all perceive of this theme so we do a few exercises that kind of help people unpack like what is your association with sound or rewilding or movement or whatever it is we do lots of sharing with each other and there's this beautiful moment uh where people are kind of we do a really just basic word association exercise put five minutes on the clock empty your brain of everything that you can think of when with when sound is the starting point you know and we put up all these prompts on the, on the screen of different ways that you could to jog their jog their memory and imagination and there's a really beautiful moment where people go into breakout rooms and they just simply have to read their lists to each other that's it and it's just this really wonderful moment every single quest where there's an aha moment with everybody where you go oh wow you see sound very very differently to me <laughs> and you see sound very very differently to me and you there's this amazing moment where you go like oh wow what i thought was possible or what i thought might happen over the course of this month exploring whatever the theme is going to be suddenly the options and the possibilities are now infinitely bigger because there's 29 in that group was normally we have about 60 actually over two groups there's up to 60 other people who are all going to influence my journey through sound or movement or color whatever the theme is uh this month and so the our job is really about programming the workshops we have a guest in week two who's kind of like somebody that's like really really involved in our theme they're called our, our guest quester um and then the other workshops are kind of based around things that we've discovered over the course of the quest and but the rest of it is really kind of self-led um you know with the support of of a global community who are all exploring this thing at the same time as you we have prompts and challenges that we we set as well that are kind of relevant to the thing that we've just explored in the session um and that's it there's no like it's i really try and enforce people say it's, it's like want people to know it's not a course there's no like kind of these are the modules it's not that it's so the opposite it's more um it's a, it's a framework to to move through I think people's the outcomes will become clear as for everybody individually as, as they move through move through it. It takes a lot of um, I think um, trust from the participants as well. Uh, oh, massively, right, yeah. Because because I, I, I guess a lot of people will go like, what's what, what do I get at the end? What, what exactly. Are, what are you teaching me? What are you? <laughs> you know, yeah. That's up it's to been you. a hard it's been a hard it's been a like a hard thing to communicate value with yeah. like 
because because I think people are so used to being like, okay, so what am I? What do I get? What am I going to learn that yeah. I should part with my money for? And exactly. and we and it's hard. Oh, I mean, I can. There are literally are a list of things. I'm like, well, there's four workshops. There's a community. Blah. There's these emails. Like that is a kind of exchange of value. But I'm like, but honestly, the real value will be how much you put into it and surrounded by all of these other people who are also putting it in there like the value is in is in the kind of the commitment because when like god seriously the power of 60 people 40 50 60 people all putting their creative energy in the same direction Mm. is incredible like and you have to put in to get back yeah yeah, 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 exactly. It, so- it sounds, um, I mean, it sounds amazing. Uh, in a way, I think a lot of people will maybe compare it to things like a retreat or something, like, but a mm. sort of a mental retreat. <laughs> sort yeah. of like, because cause it, does, it, it does take you away from, you know, the ordinary or the, you know, the day-to-day stuff. Yeah. And you really have to, but it, but it depends. So if you are, suppose you go to a retreat uh, with your colleagues or your team or with people you don't know, which is totally mm-hmm. different, obviously, but you take your phone and and your your laptop and you don't you know you keep you know keep reading up and studying if you're not mm. really there in the moment and you're not you don't take out as much as you could so it's 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 always that way but it's always it's in every meeting actually in every meeting if you're not really committed if you're not really listening you know you don't you know i think the um, so i i think that what you're doing um i think there's a maybe not everybody might might not know that or might not know that this is something they actually need but i think a lot of people actually need to do these things because mm-hmm. of our you know busy everybody's so busy everybody's mm-hmm. running we are bombarded with with texts and 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 what you know mm-hmm. and it's, it's like so much information so mm-hmm. it's such a huge overload and i think that we need to kind of carve out these moments where we where we actually are really in the moment and we are there and and we're focused on each other and we learn from each other. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a struggle for a lot of people. And I see that yeah. with my, when I see it with my kids as well. Um, you know, that, that yeah, you're, 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 there's always something that you need to do. And there's always a message mm-hmm. somewhere waiting for you mm-hmm. or a little thing that's bleeping or mm-hmm. there's a, you know, and there's someone sends you a text that after two minutes says, hello, can you answer me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, you know, let's, you know, leave me alone. Um, mm, you know, mm. I think, I think that, um, and I think I mean, maybe I know this might go too far, but this, this whole, I think that we were also living through an age where, where we don't, we don't have a lot of religion anymore. We don't have mm. a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, so people might look, go through, go, go look for meditation. And so that's becoming something or doing yoga or, but all that mm-hmm. looking for a space to kind of be, just be there in the moment mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. rushing through it and not, and you know, everything being so quick and shallow. And so I think that's something that you're, I think, I think that is of amazing value if, mm. uh, and I think there's an, so I don't, I shouldn't worry about having to explain it. Uh, I think the way you said it is awesome. The power of having those people really mm-hmm. focus and the creativity, the combined yeah. creativity and the combined kind of knowledge and experiences people have that they can share and insights and, or, or just their own, just sharing everybody else's way of looking at the world can be such mm-hmm. an eye-opening thing. Like yeah, really? Big time. Yeah. Right. So which yeah. is empathy in a way you're describing yes, empathy, def- right? Definitely. Definitely. It's, it's, there's so many, you know, I'm pretty deep on these, these quests now as you can as you can tell <laughs> and in terms of yeah. like how, how i viewed their impact but also on how many different themes i've explored at this point like i'm I, I think i'm like past 30 now um since since the beginning of 2016 and every quest there is something that t- that teaches me about another th- another kind of just human trait or some just something about the human condition that i just didn't know before and it's yeah it's it's really it's really powerful yeah empathy has it has a huge amount to do with it being able to yes 
speak the language of another person kind of un- actually understand them from being like oh okay yeah, i get it because i've actually spent a month like <laughs> i'm just don't completely get it because you know people spend a lot longer than a month dedicating themselves to certain things but you get a little taste um well, that's really that's actually really important that you what you just said i think because i think that's often at least my my personal opinion the misunderstanding of empathy is that uh that you can't really really be that person other person yeah. can't really really see the world through their eyes and i you know the limitation of it is actually is actually the realization of the limitation is i mm-hmm. i would say that is the empathy is like you, you you that you cannot understand but you acknowledge that someone else sees the world differently you get a little taste of it because you talk to them you have to co-create with people so you have to listen to each other but you can't be that but you can't say okay get it now i know how you see the world thank you very much <laughs> and then, you know and you're like i know exactly what that person you know thinks yeah. like and 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 does and no you don't i mean and i one yeah. of the moments i that became was very apparent to me was when i worked with the refugees so we mm. were working with refugees from syria how can i you know i you know being brought up and living in this safe little country uh you know having i have not mm. i've never had to run with my kids from a war uh mm-hmm. you know i never had to do that how can i you know, mm. be you know look through their eyes i i so i actually so actually knowing that i cannot but 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 being able to say so i need them to work with me to, in order to find solutions for the, for problems they have i need them to tell me and i have to listen to them without being arrogant to saying ah yeah i didn't i i did some research in an interview and i and a poll <laughs> and like i know how they think so this is what syrian refugees need uh no you don't it's actually the continuous dialogue which is what you need to have which is difficult uh, mm-hmm. But I think that's such an interesting, and in a way, what you're describing is what you're doing. You're saying, "Here, you know, this is what people think," and uh, listen to mm-hmm. it, they, like be amazed, and and mm-hmm. and think, "Oh, there's all these other options, right?" That's yeah. So, oh, that's also great because it makes you very vulnerable. Because like your truth is not the truth, mm-hmm. but it also is liberating. I think, and and so Definitely. that to me is creative leadership. Creative leadership is yeah. of sort of stretching, sort of the boundaries uh, you know showing options that you never even considered were options yeah yeah right? yeah and you're like here there's all these other options and you're yeah like, oh, i never knew that was an option <laughs> i totally I've, I've thought a lot about what it means to be a creative leader having you know stepped into i guess there's like there was obviously leadership elements or well, lots of leadership elements with with managing music artists but mm-hmm. it's more it, it, it's more of a partnership you know when you're managing a music artist but i've really realized in the last 18 months of of running this as a business like how crazy close the parallels are between like managing a music artist and trying to get you know their career going and grow a fan base like how closely related it is to trying to build a community-based business like i feel like i'm trying to break a band right now like yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like and that, that's a start and one of the things that management taught me as being a creative as being a leader is like that real really good creative leadership is knowing when to lead but also knowing when to be led and like leaving space for that to go like okay i'm going to sit back and see how this this plays out and be willing to like be wrong be willing to step into the unknown and see how somebody else would take it and it's it's always a bit of a kind of a, a it's a it's a yeah not a tug of war but it's a it's an ebb and a flow you know you need to know when to sort of step in and when to step back yeah. um especially yeah when it's community based and you know i've now just we've got a couple of people that that work on creative quests with me now and um yeah i really try and pra- try and practice that um obviously you kind of want to as as the person as the founder of the company of course i want to have a vision and there's things that i want to achieve but doing these creative quests and over over the years that i have um has taught me a kind of i suppose a, hu- a humility um yeah that there's always another way of doing things and it will probably be just as good if not better than your way <laughs> Well, it's important to to I think to acknowledge that because if you if you don't if you don't ex, sort of ex, 
Um, if you don't see that, if you don't really realize that, that there are other possibilities, then you won't see mm. them either. So yeah. then you you get stuck in your way of doing things, and and and, and then before you know it, uh, you know you're on the wrong path, and you have no clue. You didn't even know you. So actually, being able to that's a vulnerability. Um, yeah. We're not taught being that vulnerable. We were taught to be an expert and knowing the answers, um, and that sort of you know, which is in a way that's not really real life. Life is mm -hmm. full of you know things that go wrong, and I mm. think that's our human skill, and I think that's our that's if, if so if you're looking at the future with uh you know uh, artificial intelligence and 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 and, and quantum computing we're going to be replaced a lot of jobs are going to be replaced uh, with uh, with artificial intelligence which uh, and, and because it just can do a better job at, uh, mm. at a lot of things but but the thing that we as human beings can do things are like creativity but it's mm -hmm. very much connected also to i always say us being just stupid uh, making, you know, we are stupid. Yeah. Computers can't be stupid. They can't yeah, go yeah, like, yeah. oops, you know, they go like, yeah. cause we go like, oh shit. Oh God, that went horribly wrong. I dropped yeah. it or something. Oh, I forgot this thing. Oh God. I forgot to kind of yeah, yeah, turn, yeah. turn off the heater or something. The stove is still on yeah. or something. And then you go like, oh, what happened? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. I didn't. That wasn't the, the intention. It, it happy tends, accidents. Yeah, Computers yeah. don't make happy yeah, accidents. You, no, you don't. You don't. Yeah, you don't run a computer program for it to sort of be imperfect. <laughs> it's an interesting thought, by the way. <laughs> like, yeah. like messing things up. Like, oops. <laughs> like, yeah, like, exactly. Oh, my God. Because yeah, that would be pretty mad. That'd be really, yes, like, <laughs> yeah, maybe dangerous. I don't know. Uh, I no, but dangerous. I think I, I'm not sure if artificial intelligence can ever uh, do that. I mean, I, I don't know if things are going really weird. Uh, I mean, in the future is going to be really weird. But still, I think, I think. <laughs> the present is really weird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The future's going to be weirder, but it's pretty weird right now. It's weird all over. Yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. It is totally yeah. weird. Well, in weird times, in, in strange times, in, in times that are are, are crazy and chaotic and, and, and we don't understand, don't you just want to be that person that is in between those spaces? Kind of, yeah. you know, being able to look look up and, and look around and yeah. recognize these different spaces instead of being heads down and just seeing your own little thing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, don't we, I think we need people like yourself to to kind of lead us in that in that space or at least be part of the conversation and not mm -hmm. just the people who are just heads down. We need those people that say, yeah, wait a minute, you know, what? Well, what, there are all these other options. It's not just this. It's not just like mm -hmm. this, this or that. <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. There's um, there's a gazillion options, and there, yeah. there might be better ways. Um, I think that's a that's a um, that's a way of looking and and and, and a skill that that we need uh, for for the, for for now. <laughs> but yeah, hundred percent. But also yeah, for the I, future. Definitely. Um, yeah, we 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 are definitely in a in a time where lots of things are and and have to be reimagined and exactly. to to get to that space you have you're going to have to create these these in-between spaces that we're talking about for people all kinds of people to come together and yep. tr and experiment with possibility yeah. and imagination it, it has to happen like um yeah. because and, that's where the bridge yeah. that's where the connection is yeah. that's yeah. so we don't stay in our own spaces but it's yeah. it is everywhere. So that's how it's so, so fascinating. It's everywhere. It's it is in very in you know you can look at it in, in you know you can talk about politics or societies or communities. But we also even in business, com companies or industries are colliding. Uh, you mm. know, we're, we're, everything is kind of blending and merging. And I think that is part of the uh, sort of the, the the anxiety a lot of people have. You know, because it's so unclear. Everything is kind of colliding. Uh, all the companies are basically interested in your data and they want mm -hmm. your, they want to be part of your household. They want to know your kids. Mm -hmm. They want to know your, they're all in, in you want to know your, your health as a, as, you know, they want to be involved in everything, everything, everything. Amazon is taking over the planet and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So this whole thing is going, it's happening. Um, and, and we all have our, our 
QR codes and then there's artificial intelligence and quantum computing is going to blow our mind. He's already blowing mm-hmm. our minds, but we don't even know what that's going to do. Mm-hmm. So there's mm-hmm. this, this what you know, what we call this new industrial revolution in a way. But I think there's there's a shift, and then we have this COVID thing, and then mm-hmm. we have the environment, and there's all this mm-hmm. stress, and then there's energy, and then so I really feel that that um, that that needs people, you know, to see sort of these defined kind of spaces and say, mm-hmm. hey, but, you know, we get together in the space in between. Yeah. Yeah. We need to have that safe space, which yeah. is okay, and, and where we don't know, where mm-hmm. we actually don't know what it is, because it's in mm-hmm. between. And we have like, I don't know what that is. And making people comfortable, exactly what you're doing with your quests, actually, making people feel safe in a space that they don't know, mm-hmm. is, I think that is, I think that is, that's, that's what we need. Definitely. And yeah, I, and I hope, I hope for the people that do these quests that, that, that feeling of being in a space for however long people join us for a month, two months, six months, whatever, that the feeling of getting uncomfortable with, well, getting comfortable with the kind of, yeah, uncomfortable of, of not knowing the uncertainty. Like I really hope that that's something that people take back into their, their day-to-day lives, you know, whether it's an, a conversation they need to have with a partner or a boss, or there's something that they want to stand up to uh, a company in their community or whatever. It's, you know, that, that having spent time, yeah, de- dealing with the unknown that you kind of feel a bit more prepared than you were before, before, you know, taking on, on a quest. Cause some, you know, sometimes I think that, you know, we used it, we use the themes as, um, as kind of they're cut the themes are really a compass for they're just a kind of a way to navigate over the month but sometimes i actually think that like the true root of what creative quest is about that the themes are actually and i don't mean this to sort of um sort of degrade the value of the themes because they are very valuable but the themes are kind of arbitrary in what actually people will take, I think, from the quests. Like, I think the, the quests, actually, the heart of it is about teaching people to be more curious, live with more empathy, like, n- not worry about getting things right all the time, learning to treat, you know, the unknown with with more curiosity over fear. Um, those are really, those, and, you know, plenty of other stuff but those all those things are really and that we're all creative in our own way at the end of the day and we all see the world differently like those are all the things that are really at the heart of it and the themes are just the way that we explore that you know um yeah thank you thank you for the talk thank you for brilliant brilliant questions i've really enjoyed this thank you me too thank you very much